Welcome to our live discussion, the Itty Bitty Nerdy Committee. I'm Beastie Boy. I'm Table. I'm Red. And it is I, Shino Brando. And we'll be discussing recent news from across the multiverse, live from video games, anime, comics, and more. And stick around after the news to hear us discuss a newly released comic of the week. All right. So I guess we're starting with me this week. Yes, sir. Is that the plan? All right. So what are we throwing up first? Ah, well, it's sad to say that we're coming to the end of the month. We had such a fun time doing what we were doing this whole month, but we are also sharing content and my shared content is going to be an oldie, but goodie from 1995 called Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything. Uh, Julie Newmar, which is a movie starring Wesley Snipes, John Lewis Amo, and Patrick Swayze. Remember I told you guys that it literally it literally starred two guys we, we already talked about. We talked about Blade. We talked about The Clown. And they're both in this movie. And they're all dressed in drag. Wild. Um, <laughs> Listen, you know how much I like John Leguizamo? <laughs> Mr. Luigi. Well, he does a fantastic job in this movie. He does a fantastic job in this movie. In fact, the, the, the fun thing about this whole movie is it's, it's literally a road trip. So it starts Wesley Snipes as Noxima. Uh, <clears throat> hold on, let me get her name correctly, please. Mm -hmm. uh, Noxima Jackson and Patrick Swayze is Vita Bohem, and their their plan is they were trying to enter a, uh, a drag contest in which they both tied for first. Um, so to kind of like kind of like uh, you know break the tie, they wanted to go for the bigger one down in Las Vegas. But they they wanted to kind of challenge themselves also. So John Leguizamo's character is a newcomer to the scene who wants to get into that world, uh, and he wants to go by the name of Chichi Rodriguez. So their plan is to transform him throughout their journey to have him win the pageant that way it kind of like you know breaks their tie that means they they can both form a drag queen uh to perfection in a sense and a whole long way um along the way they kind of you know they kind of confront the social you know on, you know the, the social pushback at the time so it kind of leans on the old tropes of like you know what was you know what was against them but i mean like it kind of plays against it at the same time like they they really do take the piss on it so um with a positive attitude so you know, if you do want to check out an old debug goodie, check this movie out because it's actually a lot of fun. Um, it won awards. I think I think both Wesley Snipes and Patrick uh, Patrick Swayze walked away with awards for this movie. So um, their performances are great. So do check it out. Okay. Nice. So the thing I want to add to your fantastic piece is mm -hmm. you'll notice a riff on that on that uh, on that art in the uh, mm. top left or top right hand corner. Yeah, yeah. Some of Talk the characters here. from RuPaul's Drag Race did an mm -hmm. homage to this cover. Oh, you see? <laughs> yeah, because this movie, man, this movie means a lot. It, 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 I, I got introduced to this movie because my mom really wanted to see it. She was, she was, she's a big Wesley Snipes, Snipes fan, so she wanted to see him in drag. Um, so I wanted to see because I, because she was like, I seen him in like I think it was, uh, Passenger Fifty Seven or some shit like that. It was an action movie, so I was like, yeah, I'll go, you know, I'll go check him out in this. And uh, the whole movie's fucking funny, man. So honestly, like, I can see why they 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 paid homage to it because they really did push a boundary at the time, and it spoke on a positive note. So I mean, go check that out. And I have never seen it, and it is fantastic to see. Like, it would be in poor taste to say bring the the movie White Chicks. Yeah. See, and that's in that's in poor taste. Even though as humorous as it can get here and there, that's in like poor taste to what we're talking about here. As where this is more of a of a real deal. Okay. I am so very glad you brought this. Right on, man. And you guys do as, check it out, man. It's like, it's fucking funny. <laughs> and as like the uh the the last LGBTQ content to be featured on this show anyway not the end of our mm -hmm. lgbtq on content but on this show unfortunately oh, yeah. <laughs> it is such a pleasure to see content that is not post 2012 oh yeah, yeah. this post is old yeah <laughs> this is right? an oldie. i mean they're just genuinely taking drag serious and for all that drag has a complex relationship with the LGBTQ plus community, it is present historically and it's had a significant role. Oh, yeah. God knows it is better than to be reduced to a bunch of men in dresses all the time. 
<laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. If uh, those that are interested and would like to see more from a trans narrative, uh, Beastie, where might they find such content from us? Our humble podcast on Wednesdays. New York Crusade. Humble, he says. I like that. Yeah. Humble. Good stuff. Good show. Good show. All right. <laughs> Some more news. Let's jump to this one. Yeah. So what do we got? Throw me up something first. What do we got? Surprise me. Oh, look at that. So the DC Universe decided to talk this week. Well, <laughs> earlier this week anyways. And they wanted to just drop a few things on everybody. So in one corner, as you can see, the old man has shown his face. Michael Keaton is on the set of The Flash. Um, Bruce Wayne's in the house. Um, not in costume or anything yet. But, I mean, as we go along, we'll get pictures and such, and we'll share that with you. But the good news is he's there. And who else is there is Sasha Kell, who is now playing... Uh, Supergirl, as you can see in the other image, she's in full costume and looks like they're doing some flight work and maybe some CG. So um, I guess we'll see the end product when the movie comes up. But she's looking pretty badass for her costume, too. And on the bottom over there, the whole gang decided to show off and stunt in front of their new costumes. So you know what that means, right, guys? New Power she's Rangers? Anti- yeah. New, new action figures. <laughs> There you go. You know, you know, Beastie. I kind of like your, I kind of like your answer first too, right? I want them yeah. to have helmets because that'll be the baddest team. I'm not even lying. <laughs> don't, yeah, right? don't, don't get it so twisted. A lot of them like, are children. Safety first. Yeah, yeah. Don't get it twisted. You know what? If that's what the 2017 Power Rangers movie looked like, I would have signed on fast. <laughs> you see, what I'm I don't watch that shit too. Like they look a lot proper, but I mean, like it's good to see Zach Levy and the whole gang. They're like, sh- you know, sh- showing off and because yeah, they want to. They want. I mean, this movie is trying to save a DC universe. If you want to think about it, because remember they said nothing's extended, but this and Black Adam and the Justice Society are going to be one whole thing. So at least we have. You see, you're gonna have a continent, like a continuity between those films. Films. So, I mean, we're going to have something from the DC universe, kind of. Right? Okay. Yeah. It is so then, cool to see this other Supergirl. And the fact that we now live in the world where mm-hmm. two Supergirls on two... Di- well, I mean, one's coming to an end very shortly. But right. that they both can exist kind of in the zeitgeist at the same time, or really close yeah. to each other anyway, is really neat and really, like says what DC might do with the other properties. Like, oh, you know, even though we have Supergirl and super characters over here, fuck it. We'll put them wherever we damn well please. Well, I mean, hey, they say Grant Gustin's supposed to you're supposed to cameo in the in you know Ezra Miller's film. So that means that means a whole scene that happened in Crisis, the TV crisis was was canon. So I mean they're playing with some stuff here right now. That's so cool. Yeah. So there's things happening. Did you happen to get the image of Helen Mirren? In her costume? I did, but it's not on screen. So how about you, uh... Mm-hmm. We, we chat... Uh, Table, we you chat haven't said some much more? about, about uh, this news. How about you chat about it for a little bit while I correct an error? Table doesn't seem to be here at the moment. Um, unless they have their mic muted. No, I'm trying not to turn into a Decepticon. I swear I'm present. Oh, <laughs> those will come up later. <laughs> <laughs> that <Damn>. does happen. <laughs> no, geez. Um, actually, you know, what, what are your thoughts about this? The Shazam costumes, anyways? They look okay. So, so I so I heard Buzz that every, like last week, it was complaining about like costumes looking a little too like not classic anymore and they kind of like the first versions and i'm like well i mean i don't really care per se i mean the costumes themselves can always evolve it's fine with me like you already know the gimmick right it sells mm-hmm. for, for toys but i mean like if you're gonna do it at least make the costumes look good i never complained about like mcu guys switching their costumes because i mean they're always some of them always look kind of good right i never mm-hmm. complained about like caps costumes except for like maybe the avengers one but then I, it kind of grew on me so i mean like the costumes are kind of cool so as long as you evolve them, you know, correctly and they look good, I don't really, I don't really mind. Um, but I mean, like, I, I can see the the crowd not liking it if you know, if they, oh, it's not like, it's not a classic look. If you kind of like a classic look, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? But I mean, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. There's some costumes that get away with it. And then, you know, Spidey's costume is pretty classic as it gets in Homecoming and stuff, right? But I mean, it's got black treads on it. So I mean, did you, did you really care about that? Or did, was it classic <laughs> enough for you? I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> it, it became classic and then they're like, let's change it up a little bit. For style and action yeah. figures, can I copy your homework? Yeah, bro, just change it up a little bit. Sure, yeah, exactly. Ah. 
right? Oh man, but yeah. But uh, thanks for adding the image there, Red. So we got Helen Mirren in costume as Hespera, and she looks like she's giving some sage advice to Zach Levy down there at Shazam. It looks like he's paying attention like a good boy, um, learning his lessons. So um, it's good to see that things are forming and rolling. Things are in motion, and we're going to get some DC movies. Where it's you know Hope is not completely dead. It's not an ass on someone's chest, but it's not completely dead yet, right? Mm-hmm. So it's something to look forward to. Listen, what do we got I'm super for me glad next? that... Uh... Yeah that she's showing up and that like JSA members and like, Ooh, like all that's going to be super mm-hmm. tied together. I'm like, Whoa. yeah, things there's, are motion. There's some big love moving. for some of those characters around these parts. I'll tell you what, you just want to see the JSA oh, yeah. on screen. Let's be real. I, I'm not saying you're wrong, but why do you guys say it out loud? <laughs> because it has to be said it's, it's bound to happen. They do deserve it. They right? have been in the shadows for too long. The entire time. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, what do you got for me next? Ah, uh, a whole lot of this. <laughs> I like so. a lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jesus. So speaking of, so we just we just jump from you know DC and they're you know they're doing a bunch of you know, inter- infinite earth stuff and Marvel's doing a bunch of their multiverse stuff and. That seems to be the bee's knees right now, and so much so that Hasbro has decided to extend their universe by adding Transformers: Rise of the Beasts. I'm not sure why we didn't just call this thing Beast Wars. The the Hasbro but I don't extended Hollywood, so. universe. You yeah. nailed it. The H U the Hue. Nailed it. <laughs> the Hue universe. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, back in the day, so. To be clear with you, I'm not gonna, when I was when I was <clears throat> years old, <laughs> an old cartoon came out and we called it Transformers. Mm-hmm. It had two sides: Autobots, and Decepticons. And for a long time, that used to be in reruns for years and years and years. Even after the death, the tra- tragic death of Optimus Prime, Rodimus Prime, we will never forgive you. Fuck you. But moving yeah. forward, are you talking about the on? first one, the second one, or the seventeenth one? We're talking about I'm the talking original about the- animated one. Yeah, original animated one when I was when I was just a young lad, per se, um, and yeah, watching that in theaters broke my heart because you know who did the stupid thing, and got you know who killed stupid ass Hot Rod. Mm. We'll never forgive you. But moving forward from him, anyways, for a long time that show was in reruns, and then you had no Transformers, and then and, and like I think in like ninety six, ninety seven, they came mm-hmm. up with like Beast Wars, mm-hmm. Beast Wars. Beasties in Canada because wars is bad to see on TV. <laughs> Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the Beast Wars came out, man, and like, and, and that resurrected a whole lot of like a whole property, and and like because Transformers were gone for a long time, people ate this up too, and this was on for like a good number of years, um, and so this seems to be the next property that Hasbro was gonna you know turn into a movie. Um, this one will not be a Bayformers explosive shitstorm like the prior <laughs> entries. So I mean, it, it'll place itself in the '90s where you know where Beast Wars belongs. Um, and as probably, you know, as Bumblebee proved, we can, you know, we can work, you know, a story outside of the Bayformers era of stuff. And we can, you know, play stuff in like a different time period of like the eighties, the nineties. And that way that shit kind of works around the Michael Bay mess that it was. I mean, he had like one good movie out of like, how many did he I'm going to say like, the first one, <laughs> lightning in a bottle yeah. in its own right. Yeah. that's about it. And then like everything else was just like the other six, I don't know how many, six, Seven? six, yeah. six. Well, because well, if you because the count if you count with uh, Shia LaBeouf, I think it was three, and, and then, then Mark with... Wahlberg had four, I think. No, I thought three, no, I think it was I think it was three or two, Whoa. and then there was that Bumblebee one the spinoff. Yeah, Bumblebee doesn't count though. Uh, okay, well, we're not counting. Uh, yeah, that. count then, we're not then counting that not, one. It's like ishy seven, six at least. Shit. At least, yeah. Hold on, I have to I have to look that up because like <laughs> he got away with that much. Hold on, uh, hold on. He got away with that many? I'm pretty There's sure no way. Six oh. kept going to them. Even if it was just to watch explosions and a robot T Rex. Oh four sequels. Uh god damn. Five Michael Bay. Oh, god god damn. Michael Bay, Michael Bay yeah, has the five actually. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So and, and yeah, that he had four sequels along with his movies. So yeah, he did five in total, the man the motherfucker. So I mean Himself, like, one yeah. out of five is yeah, one out of five ain't bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't pass any grades with that, but hey. 20% guys? Really? I mean, it ain't, it ain't terrible. Anyway, it's, it's going to be money. so cool 
to be to see the Predacons and the Maximals on fucking screen. See, yeah. So see, but, gonna, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I was, I was going to say, depending on whatever they do per se, get licensed for what they show. Right. Because like, it just depends on like, right. what so they should. Should... Well, they shared some images. So you can see in that corner, you have a concept of what Optimus Primal will look like, right? Mm-hmm. So they're going to go, you know, you know, less less organic, more, you know, machine transformed as robot, in a, in a sense. There was a whole toy line that was that. If, if you remember, they, I think... The Transmetal toy line. Yeah, there's the Transmetals as well. So, I mean, they're, they're going with that idea, which still works. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I can't imagine an organic ape transforming into a fucking robot. That would, one, freak me out, too. That looks wrong, <laughs> And his tra- his initial and- transformation in season one of that show is wild and looks gross. <laughs> yeah, he's got a twisted torso, man, which is fucked up. So, I mean, like, yeah. I don't want to see an actual ape have to twist his torso. That's going to be weird as shit. Right? Oh, it might look cool. I don't know. But anyway. And- hmm? Getting real Horizon Zero Dawn vibes from the design. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. Not a bad thing. Really good. Which is well, which is I, I would I dare say mo- I, I dare say most things nowadays are kind of like shaped around. The, I hate to say, it, but the Bay former movies kind of ch- changed you know, robot design it all together. So God damn it, yeah, <laughs> I hate to say, it, but it did. So I mean, we're going with that. But it looks, you know, I mean, it's a good. It's I guess it's a way to keep a franchise going. It looks kind of cool. And I hope it look. I hope it ends up being good. And I guess there will at least more news as we go along. We don't even know who's going to start in this thing, but it's just, it's the Beast Wars. So, I mean, all we know is yeah. Optimus Primal. Huh? That's right. So far, Optimus Primal. Who, see who else? It's just mm-hmm. so funny, too, because they, it's funny that this news came out also because they just recently started pushing a Beast Wars toy line yet again. Wait, what? Yeah. 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 I ordered so, it's one. funny that this I came out in time. You see, yeah. <laughs> there's some that are on the shelves right now. They released a two pack of Optimus Primal with Rat Trap. There's like Air, there's like a, a remaster Air Razor. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. Man. Fucking so, Rat Trap, man. Listen, yeah, we're going to find a way to talk extendedly about this franchise, about this sub franchise of Transformers. We promise. I promise you that. You, you, you bet, promise. Oh boy. I, 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 <laughs> I don't I know when. I don't know how, through. but. We'll, we'll I, find well, an extended way to talk about it. When I was a baby, you know, I lived that through 85 to 99. So, I mean, I can talk Transformers forever, man. <laughs> but where we're fine going... numbers you just gave there, Shino. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, man. like, the voice of Rat Trap is one of the most annoying voices I've ever heard in television. <laughs> but he, but that's a Canadian staple. That's Scott McNeil, and he's a he's a Canadian gem. He's voiced I understand. Those, almost everybody. The other part <laughs> of this movie or this franchise that it's absolutely buck wild is a black mm. arachnia can get it. Uh. <laughs> you, is, does that make you a robot fucker or a monster fucker? Right? <laughs> I prefer the first one. I want you to know right now that mm. Lando's looking at you with a, with a cocked eyebrow leg. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Harkness is asking, you sure about that one? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. And I'm looking back <laughs> at both of them and saying, did I study? <laughs> Donatello Ninja Turtle looking at you like mm, yeah <laughs> he's just like brother like you, you get what's that Donnie yeah Donatello does machines wait wait, wait. whoa <laughs> hey Beastie uh huh please take us away from this before I dig myself a deep I might hole. never recover from you, that you mean this robot train for you fucking situation yeah that's fine <laughs> wait a minute oh hold on Black Rannick Rackney <laughs> they ain't the only thing that's robot in this guy <laughs> Stop it. Okay, let's go. All right. I hate that. I got more of that meets the app for you. Yeah. Shoot <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Beastie, please. I'm ready. I'm just waiting. <laughs> it's there. <sighs> oh, good times. Anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there was literal news that just dropped like not too long ago uh, as of this, I guess, by timing, whatever people were seeing. It's afternoon that I saw it. So um, Supernatural is getting a prequel series. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. I there's no, no. joke. Wild I, it is, no. is getting a Wild. prequel series. How? What I, do they have left to prequel? We've seen it all. Yeah, are we gonna go watch. look at the cannibals because they're all assholes. <laughs> well, okay. Who who else have we seen like per se? Uh, uh, demon hunting and all that stuff in the no. family. <laughs> you see it in the picture right on screen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We are going to get right? Mary's hunting adventures, aren't we? 
it's well the mom and dad so we're gonna get both uh the parents a john Mary and mary's john. uh yeah just you know doing the traditional hunting before the whole like situation of like uh but, yeah but what <laughs> they don't <laughs> hunt at the same time Mary right, well, hunts and fires and gets married and dies and then john starts hunting and becomes a terrible father that's the order of events well, well, we that's the know family. John was like a Vietnam vet or something, and he was also the worst. Like, <laughs> the, I, that's the family. I'm just business, giving you the news. Saying. I'm just giving you the news. <laughs> let me. Let, what about the news, Beastie? Let me. Let me just go on. I'm bringing it Dude, out mm-hmm. of context. That's mm-hmm. just that's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. But basically, as obviously CW is helming it, um, Jensen Ackle and uh, Dan Daniel Jared Penn. Oh, okay. No, the Neil Ackles, I think, I think is the yeah, wife. His, his wife. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, they have their company, the Chaos Machine, I believe was. I, I, might have, I didn't write yeah. it down, but I think they have that company. So, company. yeah. So they have that, and they're taking uh, helm for like you know, basically pushing for this sequel series. Um, for my two, co- or I don't know if anybody else knows about like the other spinoff series that they try to do, Bloodlines and Wayward Sisters. Um, they were kind of mm-hmm. like the backdoor pilots, as mentioned. But this has got more uh, extinctions to, or um, attention to actually go off. So it is going to be bringing back uh, most of the cast. Uh, mostly Jensen Ackles will be reprising Dean Winchester's character um, to be narrating him. Wait, so, like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. I was like, oh, how the fuck are we yeah. I was like, so I'm he's... pretty sure. He die. Uh... <laughs> Dean, Dean will be back to be talking in the sense of like, as a narrator, so I was like in like in the form of like you know like past memories in that sense. If I may, mm-hmm. Dean Winchester is gonna young Sheldon it. Yes, you could say, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Throw a little bit of supernatural, and yeah, basically. Oh no. I don't yeah, think I'm emotionally well. equipped for this, but I will be following this with great attention. Hey man, I I was as shocked as you were because I saw it literally pop up my feed and I was like, oh, <laughs> wow. And the wild <laughs> fact is, we have mm-hmm. covered this franchise at length, including the you know the near misses of spinoff content. Mm-hmm. Wild that it's getting picked up, and we will have more to talk about. Yeah, so that's uh, it, it's going to be happening, and production might happen later on this year. This uh, year. I, th- I believe I'm not sure I didn't have sp- they didn't have specific dates yet but uh yeah there'll be uh who was it Padalecki which I'm not sure if that's um the Same. brother that's that's Sam yeah Jerry Padalecki. Padalecki. yeah, yeah. yeah. he'll also be starring and uh producing another series but which, which is uh headed to another s- second season which is called Walker so he'll be working on that yep. but he'll be helping with this series as much as possible as well too so yeah it's the it's yeah, the remake yeah. of walker texas ranger uh mm-hmm. so they just call it walker wow yeah yep. <laughs> interesting well good old supernatural we're gonna milk that <laughs> fucking cow dry man hey man do you they know the supernatural fans are gonna be a dead horse for 10 years it wasn't gonna stop now dude they're beating the man. supernatural dead horse so hard that they're like you know what let's revive it like another time <laughs> let's so just bring so it back that- so much so that the horse just no, the, just keeps resurrecting and it has an in, like an endless cycle, like death cycle. I just feel bad. <laughs> Chuck it. keeps We've saying, been... "I'm not done with this horse yet." <laughs> yeah. Even God's looking at this horse and it's like, "You really want to get this out? Like, y'all really going for this?" Man, oh man. All right, cool. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that was that mess, <laughs> which was mm-hmm. interesting to see. But uh, a new trailer for the Candyman. Uh, per se, I guess not reboot, but like as a as it's been called a spiritual sequel, um, has been shown on on June nineteenth. Yeah, so just like last week or so, um, okay. which the director Nia Da Costa, um, yeah, Nia Da Costa actually came up with a message for Juneteenth as well, um, and then you know was promoting the more of the artwork and the new trailer and all that stuff, which uh, you'd have to look it up if you want to see the video uh, commentary, but um. I personally haven't seen the original Candyman, um, which is an adaptation from the Clive Barker tale. Um, But this is basically going to be slightly continuing from the original movie, in a sense. So, yeah, this is going to be, instead of, um, per se, Candyman himself, it's going to be a hive, as it's known. 
is oh yeah okay so it's gonna we can call it even the candy hive if you want it but like candy yeah. the candy what sorry the candy lings like zerglings <laughs> like what candy. <laughs> like candy lemmings candy 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 <laughs> candy nights oh my gosh <laughs> Um, but yeah, we also got release date, which is going to be August 27th, uh, 2021 as well. So you, you, you call a candy man, hive a candy shop in there. Candy shop. Oh, you know what? the yeah. candy shop. There you go. Well, yo, no, you know what would be stupid though, Loki? If they, mm. <laughs> they, they didn't put it into this trailer, but if they, <laughs> as Jordan Peele does with his music choices for horror films, if they like put like a remix oh version God. of Candy Shop in the God, background, I would also lose my mind. Actually, or, I would. Love. I'm pretty sure. Honestly, I'm pretty sure now that you said it, it's gonna happen. No, but the thing is, it's not being directed by him. Nita Costa is director. Jordan Peele is uh, mm-hmm. producing it, and then the co-writer for the film was uh, Win Rosenfeld. Uh, Rosenfeld. I'm so sure he somehow <laughs> it's gonna slip in there, even at the end, even probably in the end credits. It'll probably be an end credit song. Watch. <laughs> That, if you know. I a spooky version of Candy Shop, I think my life would be complete. <laughs> I would die. And listen, okay, so a wild serendipity. So I was mm-hmm. listening to that album because I own it on vinyl. Oh, oh my god. Oh, right wild. <laughs> and I heard that song. I was like, oh yeah, that's a great song. And then wild. Wild serendipity. <laughs> Interesting. The universe fucking knows. I don't know what it knows, but it knows something. It knows something. But uh, those I I need candy. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus, no. But yeah, the main casting uh that you you will see in uh some of the trailer is gonna be um like the imaging on the left will be uh Yaha Abdul Mateen the second, uh Tiana Paris, which will be his I believe girlfriend or wife, and then Coleman Dom- Domingo um will be one of the uh, other actors that'll be part of the movie as well. Um, okay. but the other guy here in the right hand mm-hmm. picture. Um, the black man. He's I know he's from another BC series called Misfits, but I don't remember his name. And it it just escapes oh, me. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about, man. He played, yeah, he was like he was like the lead. I know what you're talking about, man. Yeah, he was the one, he was one can, of the uh, mini leads there. The one I could shape shift was it? Ah, uh, like that. I don't know if you could shape shift shift into like or like turn into like or, or like switch like swap gender. I think it was man. I, was, I, remember, mm. I remember him able to do something like that. It was uh, swapping either, I think, reversing time or something like that with shapeshifting. Because I, I remember yeah. the, the powers got shifted every, like, down on the series. And then when yeah. they were swapping out the actors, too, it was, like, a weird, like, was yeah, that, some um, crazy shit. Was that the one with the girlfriend that uh, they couldn't touch each other? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm following. Yeah. So, like, man, that series, that series in itself, I randomly watched on that on Netflix. It was wild, but it was interesting to watch. But yeah, yeah a lot of those actors are in a lot of stuff now too. Yeah, the the wife intro intro that one to me back in the day. So I was just like, ooh, this show's hype. Like, yeah, yeah, it, back in the day. Like, oh, yeah, so it's, 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 it's looking good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, no, this uh, <laughs> this trailer for Candyman, it's uh, <laughs> I am man, like this movie made me be like, I can't watch this Loki because I I Loki want to, but as a horror film, like it's more spooky than uh, both Jordan Peele's works. Well. I would say more than I guess us for me, and I was like, mm. I, I I can't watch this as a brother. I can't. I can watch it from a distance, but that's about it. Like, really, yeah, bro. Oh, yeah. It's bro. I can only do certain types of horrors. Thriller is like at the most certain like things that like mess with me, like uh like BM, like the mirror one. Uh, I, I can't. I don't okay, like okay. The Mary, the B Mary thing. Like those kind of supernatural stories kind of like mess oh, with me. So oh, like, like the Bloody Mary story or whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm not trying to say it now. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm okay. avoiding this. You're not part of a mirror, right, are you? Not. Not. I don't care. <laughs> it, it fucks with me. It really is, it, it, but it doesn't really exist. Hey, but my <laughs> little Look, young I, mind didn't know that. Okay, so shh. I'm with Beastie on the you do not risk ghosts coming into your house under any circumstances. I live in a ghost free zone, and I intend to maintain that. Exactly. I am okay, not fucking right now, that's like that. I've, I've done. I I've done the whole Candyman in the mirror. I've done the whole Bloody Mary thing in the mirror. I've done all that shit in the mirror. Nothing's happened to me. I've invited ghosts. To, I've, I've actually actively been like, please haunt me, so I believe that you're real. Haunt me now. Show me you something see? now that I believe you're real. And nothing ever fucking happens. So I'll tell you no. right now that shit ain't happening. You know, so, but I love and respect you. 
but maybe you shouldn't come into my home ever. Yeah. <laughs> no, bring your I bad mean... ghost vibes here. No, 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 no. No, he's got somebody attached to him that like wards all that shit off. It's good. It's fine. He's fine. It's called a stand. Thank you. You should get yeah. him. <laughs> he stunned the power. Good That's cover. Great. Good cover. With that in mind, before mm -hmm. we introduce you all to some more news. We're going to run ourselves a little ad. If you don't want to see the ad and would like to continue supporting us, you can be like our favorite person ever, Hoculus, and hit the subscribe button for four ninety nine. Well, five bucks, and Twitch takes the penny. With that in mind, we'll see you in 60 seconds. Boom. Transition. Man goes chill. Uh, so you can keep your spooky bitch <laughs> stuff Listen, yourself. Listen, y'all can keep all that spooky shit Stop. over there. I don't do it spooky. I don't spook. You can take care of it and go do whatever the fuck you want, apparently. <laughs> ah. look, okay, no, no, shit. Okay, okay, so I'll explain this real quick, right? For oh. me, I'm like ghosts and all that stuff, whatever. Zombies, fuck it, whatever, right? Like, uh, mm. different, like, tour types, sure. But it's stuff like, uh, like, the B Mary stuff that, like, I saw in Supernatural when I was younger, like, that yeah, fucked buddy, with yeah. me a little bit. Oh, yeah. So like, like summonable nonsense. Like yeah, shit so that I'll you actually have to personally call up and then you're like, hmm, this might have been a bad idea. Exactly. This is like, so, as, as, so as a young kid, that fucked with me. Table, okay. we're gonna start with Jerry. Into abandoned... uh, we're gonna start with Seinfeld. I have walked into abandoned buildings and begged them to come behind me. Please, just please you show me something. You like so danger. Three, you two, hey, two one. So I, need, I need proof. Damn. But that Wait, is my and news. that brings us to all right, that brings us to my news for the evening. And I have stupid movies that are going to exist, whether we like them or not. Oh, boy. Now, I don't think Jerry Seinfeld's very funny. <laughs> Fight me in the comments. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you that astronaut meme right now and say Netflix that he never was. Stuff. I agree. Thank you. Wonderful. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, so he recently had a Netflix special that went up. And apparently he made a Pop-Tart joke in it. Again, I didn't watch the special because I don't think he's funny. But it's there. He makes some joke about how in his childhood, he came to the question of how did they know that there would be a need for a frosted, fruit-filled, heated rectangle in the same shape as the box it comes in and with the same nutrition as the box it comes in. With this isn't funny to me, but sure. I don't really perceive this as a joke, but that is the actual quote from the show. So, huh. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, Seinfeld has decided that because his, uh, coffee with comedians in cars or whatever show isn't doing well as far as i know yeah. he needs something else to be relevant so he's gonna make a movie about pop tarts huh you're done you're done yeah. okay <laughs> no no he's making, a, he's, he's making them he's making he's making a movie about pop -tarts. it's titled unfrosted stop and i'm not really sure what it's going to be up about, other than it is apparently a very large deconstruction of his pop tart joke it's supposed to be pure silliness quote and it's sort of a response to the jazz hands dark times we live in in which we are still haunted by the backstreet boys to this very day Whoa. uh <laughs> they really I, they really looked at the joke and were like hand. they really looked at the joke and were like you know what this was funny enough to make a, its own movie, and they're like, haha, everybody else, who said we wanted this? No one. No one exactly. wanted this. In fact. Exactly. Which, you know what's wild? He's not even the only writer on this thing. Stop. It was co-written with Spike Ferriston and Barry Martyr. Unknown names? Well, it's, it's to, it just proves to show yeah. you these three people have their comedic range of a Pop-Tart. <laughs> it's true. And also, yeah, perhaps they should do more research into pastries if they want to know where pop tarts came from just saying it's quite all right you're talking about you're talking about jerry seinfeld the guy who has the, the comedic time of a fucking drywall Ew. Damn. and do you want to know the worst thing this article told me mm -hmm. this is not the only movie about a popular snack food that is currently in production oh, first time no. director eva longoria what? is making what is described as a biopic about the alleged creation of Flaming Hot Cheetos. Now, it's claiming that it's a true story. Frito Lay, the company behind Cheetos, says that this is not true and it's actually a work of fiction. This movie uh -huh. will be called Flaming Hot. Uh, 
I hate that both this and Unfrosted are going to exist in our world. We truly live in the darkest timeline. I want you to know that no, you start okay, you um, you made me want to start drinking. Uh, oh my god. Uh, you know what? I'm I'm done with this world because I live in a world that we have movies about emojis and now now fucking breakfast snacks and fucking Cheetos now. Flaming hot know, Cheetos. I'm, I'm don't even don't correct me. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> I was right? drinking. Fuck both of you. <laughs> I, 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 this yeah. tells you that no. cinema is in fact dead. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm and done, man. You want to hear something else that's working to kill cinema? <laughs> These jokes? Red, take us to the next slide. Ten part. So, you might be aware that Disney's dropping its Jungle Cruise movie in the near future. Oh, I Well, you... they're also working on something about to the Tower of Terror attraction ride which mm -hmm. scarlett johansson will be producing and starring in pause is, um, is, is, is she not afraid of like jumping from heights already is she, is she not okay I, with that well oh, she's stop. not afraid i don't know man she's not stop. afraid of stardom and we know that oh man yeah. but she should be afraid of heights bro i mean tower of terror i mean last time she was up high it wasn't really good i i you know, don't know what to tell you man and this isn't the first Tower of Terror movie to exist, to be clear. There was one in 1997 starring Steve Guttenberg mm -hmm. and Kirsten Guttenberg. Dunst. But mm -hmm. I've never heard of it, so clearly it didn't do very well, and Disney has decided it's time for a take two. And I, I don't know what to tell you. I I really don't. Like, they're making a Haunted Mansion movie as well from the, like, the creator of Dear White People will be working on that one? What, 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 One what, Justin again? Simeon? Like, what? Oh, wait. Oh. The, like, Dear White People series or movie? Well, I mean, like, it might be the same people, I'm not sure, but... He's directing Haunted Mansion. A Haunted Mansion movie. Which is co-written by the person behind the 2016 Ghostbusters. Like, what? Whoa. But didn't oh, the Haunted Mansion oh, movie already exist oh, with, man. um... Well, Eddie Murphy? Oh, uh, maybe, but they're sure making another one. They what? sure are, yeah. I okay. I do not have words for the cesspool of like self masturbatory content that Disney is turning into. <sighs> they will sell you anything again, but particular anything yeah. that already instead exists, of, and they don't have to do more work for. Instead of using, instead of doing things that may have, you know, that didn't work out in your animated properties that you may try on to try you make, you know, making live action, like I don't know, Treasure Planet and Atlantis and shit, you're you're gonna do stuff like Tower of Terror. Garbage. Hey, they're actually rummaging through a dumpster right now for content. Yeah. They so you could go back to like Atlantis and do better. <laughs> you have the Black Cauldron. You could do something out of that. So people are asking for more fantasy stuff right now. You can make that, but yeah, we're gonna do Tower of Terror. So speaking cool. of Marvel, going back to the garbage can. Marvel. Mm -hmm. Oh. What do you I, got, Red? There was no way you could have set me up better if you tried. <laughs> you know me. I'm here for those transitions. Hey, y'all, Ben Riley's back. <laughs> ben! Okay. <laughs> okay. Ben, by, ben Riley will be taking over the mantle of Spider Man proper. Again, As of uh, Amazing Spider-Man Where's Spider Peter? Where's wait, Miles? Wait, wait, wait. What is going on? What are we doing with Peter? Yeah, what are we doing with Peter? What are we doing with Miles? What's happening now? Are they sharing and just splitting New York three ways now? What? Uh, Spidey, Spider-Man, and me... Kid Arachnid. Boom. Stop that. You can put that away. <laughs> Do not. I can say because I like Spidey. <clears throat> so shush. The... This saga, where Ben Riley will take the mantle of Spider-Man, uh, backed by the Beyond Corporation. Okay. Uh, there was a teaser promoted the other day, and it is shown to have fatal consequences for Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hasn't that boy been through enough? No. Apparently not. No, you're talking about Marvel Comics. No, he would never go through enough. But here's my thing, right? So not only are, and you can turn in, tune in to twitch.tv slash nerd crusade uh, every three or so weeks to continue more of this saga. Not only are we continuing the clone saga, Ben Riley mm -hmm. is back as Spider-Man and 
Miles, later on in our Clone Saga series, will be taking on a Kane-esque oh, version boy. of his costume. Oh man! I've got two okay. questions. First of all, the f I my first instinct was Miles was just going to start using a cane in combat, and that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, second of all, Miles, please don't rip anyone's faces off, please. Now, please don't. I have a qu my question to you, Reddy, is when you say cane, are we talking like cane like version one, where the costume looks just doesn't make any sense, or are we talking like version two, where it's like a black and red costume? The black and red one. Thank God. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it, it looks neat. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it will be Miles' new costume going forward. But it's comic books. It could reset in six months. Okay. Because... <clears> I mean, I've seen a lot of... Because Kane version was like an edgelord, man. It was just too much. But, like, I've seen a lot of uh, variant covers dropping this month because it's Miles' 10th anniversary, right? And, and he's also, had a variety of different, of different costumes across those, so if he pulled something kind of like one of them, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, so one of those, in fact, is uh, based on Captain America's 50th anniversary, which we are also celebrating. Mm. And so Miles, on a cover, and not in the story, will be getting the Captain America paint job. Shield and all. Right on. I like this. Mm. I'm glad confused, but okay. I'm glad you like some comic book news because the next comic book news that I have is unfortunate. It's unfortunate that I've got to bring this news and put it on our platform, but it needs to be had. So before we move on to my next piece of news, I will say up front, this is a content warning. The following will contain um, mentions of sexual assault and um, uh, grooming of minors. Bad to hear. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. If this is where you leave our show, that's fine. You have yourself a good night. We appreciate you coming by. We will see you later on the week across our many platforms. I will wait 30 seconds for those that wish to leave to, to have their chance to do so. Man, the dichotomy of the comics world. Truly. You're like, mm -hmm. goofy stuff going on, and in the background, some of the creators are actually just garbage, which sucks. Okay. Yeah. Warren Ellis is writing a new comic book for Image. Warren Ellis... I'm hissing like an arachnid. ...last June and the many months following was called out by 100 people that identify as 100. females and non-binary people because he online and in many cases, including a case in Toronto groomed mm -hmm. them with the intention to meet up with them mm -hmm. if you wish to read through these stories pardon me there are not words for how icky that is I understand yeah usually I do this show uh, you know having some fun and, however, this was a very serious topic, so we're taking a different turn here at the end of our show before our last segment. If you wish to read through some of the horrific, absolutely horrid um, stories that these people have faced, the link on screen will take you to these stories. Again, the same content warning that I applied at the beginning of this segment applies to that entire site. Warren Ellis is known for doing a, unfortunately, fantastic job uh, bringing back the character of Moon Knight. And most recently, in 2020, doing a comic for DC called The Batman's Grave. The comic he is doing for Image, um, because of the way Image is structured and creators can take their books wherever they please, Image 
is actually allowing this man to put out his book through them and still slapping their name on it. Bad call. So, here on the Nerd Crusade, we actually had the intention of going through one of Image's mainstay books that came out this week. However, with the news of this man and the fact that that company has chosen to put this creator on a book and put it out, we no longer wish to support that company. Because any company that decides to put these kind of people up front and on center stage doesn't deserve your money. Yeah, it's well, like so, so by choosing to be comics, we hardly knew ye. Uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate because a really cool book came out from them, but we we can't in good conscience support that book. No, 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 no. we won't be doing no. that. Nor will we even name the book so people could go find it. We don't want to attract different attention in different places. What we can yeah, do. No. No. The upside is that on that site and many sites reporting this news have all listed the same ways that Mr. Warren Ellis can at least make right. The trauma that he has possibly put these people through will never be forgotten. Forgotten. Okay? It will take many years of therapy for people to undo how he has hurt them. The bare minimum that he can do to hold himself accountable is as follows. Acknowledge his actions in their entirety. Acknowledge his pattern of harmful behavior. Acknowledge that he has callously hurt people. And most importantly, contribute to transformative work to dismantle the systems which allowed this to go on. And then lastly, disappear so we don't have to hear about you ever again because you're nasty. That hard facts. In fact, that should be number one. Mm-hmm. The transition to our comic this week is... Very hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. So we so will guess... say. Yes, table, mm -hmm. please, please. Uh, it's a little bit suitable then that our comic this week, for all that it's specifically and deliberately not image, falls on the darker end of the spectrum as well. Because this week we're looking at book one of DC Black Label, Batman Reptilian by Garth Ennis and Liam Sharp. And look, I as a as a person who loves the character of Batman but hates 98% of his portrayals, this one does an excellent job in that it makes Batman fucking terrifying. This book is dark content. It talks about extreme injuries to individuals and it has Batman being the spookiest thing on the page every time you see him. I am already in love with it, and I'm super excited to see where this goes. Like, I'll admit, it's got a weird art style. It's very stylized and almost painting-esque with a lot of dark colors with very particular highlights. It puts a lot of effort on, into the outlines of things more than the meat of them. But that's almost a relief because when you see that detail of faces or bodies, it's almost uncomfortable that they're both very realistic and somehow deeply uncanny. So, you know, kudos. I'm, I'm creeped out, but nice. This book opens with on on the depths of one of Gotham's courthouses with 
some skeevy fucking lawyer talking about the fact that his client has been found innocent because the evidence that Batman brought to the courts was disallowed on the grounds that, you know, some fucking vigilante brought it in. We can't use this, which legally speaking is true, but it sure is fucking gross because the crime is that this man, uh, it's not entirely clear what type of combat he engages in professionally, but he might be a boxer, maybe. Well, based on the fact he's fucking huge. Yeah, probably a boxer, heavyweight. And he has a world championship. And he assaulted two sex workers and left them in the hospital. And when they tried to sue him, well, how are you going to, how are two poor sex workers going to fight a guy like this in court? The answer is it ended about the same way that their physical altercation with him went really fucking badly. And of course, Batman having worked so hard to bring him to justice, doesn't exactly take this lightly. From the back of the crowd, looming in an, this edged shadow, he comes up, looks this guy in the face, and calls him a coward. And then he, can, he tears him apart verbally. He, every single accusation is as far... We have reason to believe it's honest because, you know, Batman doesn't fuck around with this kind of thing. Calling him a liar, a rapist, a brute, but above all, a coward. He talks about him being stupid and pathetic and a deeply disgusting person because he's just going to keep thinking about this fact that, you know what? You're going to hurt people. You're going to do this to people over and over again, even when you're with your fucking wife, which, yikes. And he keeps going so personally until the guy loses it and tries to hit him and i think and not only does he try to hit him he tries to hit him in front of all of these cameras all of these reporters but you don't punch batman unless you're like bane and this guy sure he's tall but he's no fucking bane no he's not it the there is no scene of the fight we see Batman dodge out of the way and then a small red panel with rain figures in the background, the curling tendrils that characterize Batman's cape in this book, and a shaking hand reaching up with a scream across the panel. And then Batman's walking away and calls it self-defense while we see Ma this guy's feet the sticking out. Him, the man gave him the guy gardener. Honestly. <laughs> so this book is called Quick and Dirty. Is that was the introduction. And uh the punch it, was quick and dirty. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. We get to see Batman and Alfred just uh chatting about a case in the Bat Cave. The lighting, cool as shit. The cave, spooky, wonderful. I know that they're not like little fairy lights like you'd hang around your room for your Instagram's photos, but I like to imagine they are. I uh, like to believe that it's inspired by Gotham by Gaslight. Oh, almost certainly. So the specific case that they're now talking about is that the Scarecrow and the Mad Hatter were found together, assaulted, gutted, in fact, they're alive, but some of the goons with them were not so lucky. Two of them are dead, four are injured, and one of the bodies was, brace herself for some more gore, apparently found partly inserted inside another's chest cavity. Oh my god. Oh, what? Wait, so wait, 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 wait. Y'all remember Batman the movie out here Hancock? People Guy Gardner, so gonna... Yeah, but let's say someone else, someone out here is giving some people the Hancock right now. Jesus, what's going on? Yeah, listen, we don't know. You and I, uh, the Hatter required a tracheotomy, though. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that you and wow. I both pulled the movie Hancock with that yeah, same move, is, it's fucking man. <laughs> yeah. So Batman goes. I do. I I have to go check this out. Uh, Alfred makes you know classic 
about, oh, I guess you're leaving all of the normal people work to me because there are uh, children for a, like a program coming by the Wayne Manor tomorrow morning. And surely Bruce will be mm. fucking exhausted come tomorrow morning, but whatever. As usual, but yeah. And then we cut to the streets. Batman has parked his fucking Batmobile on the street outside of a bar. <clears throat> now, gee, I hope no Jason Todd take my tires this time. <laughs> I, I hope no redheaded children come to steal my tires. Like, fuck. Depends your cannon. Who knows what color <laughs> hair Jason has? It's up for discussion. Oh no, uh, another orphan to take into the Bat family. Uh. <laughs> so, I just, this is another beautiful shot because the street has some gorgeous light and fog kind of things. The, t the pavement is wet so you can see lights reflected off of it. It's so pretty. And Batman turns up. He talks, he just straight up talks to the fucking bartender and is like, hey, Tell me where this guy is. And the guy's like, uh, I don't know where he is right now. And Batman says, well, someone here obviously does. And then he spooks a guy into basically contacting the other dude on his behalf so that they he could meet up with him. Again, this... One of the cool things this book does is it actually doesn't show you any face under the mask. It's just... It's almost like the suit itself is just standing there being terrifying at people. Like, just the entity of Batman just exudes fear. Yeah, and where everything else is usually lined fairly darkly, uh, he is mm. almost always dark, lined in white. It, and his cape does that curly thing at the bottom in any scene you can see it. It's just... Yeah. No, I'm... I fucking adore this portrayal. And then he meets the guy on the roof and he is just so casual. Like, look, we see a lot of portrayals of Batman being scary by like yelling at people and the gargle voice and, you know, I'll beat it out Where's of you Rachel? if I have to. Like, yeah. Who do you work for? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Here he doesn't have to be that, he doesn't have to prove he's scary. He just is he casually backs this guy to the edge of the roof and then tells him hey man what are you worried about the batman never kills everyone knows that you can walk away whenever you want while clearly standing between him and the rest of the rooftop <laughs> this is the best like bait and switch on that phrase i've ever seen in all of my comic reading ever it's so good. It's like, yeah, you're free and to walk away, but I don't think you're gonna. It's in your best interest and not to. This guy, of course, goes, look, I is this about the Penguin and the Riddler thing? I didn't do that. And Batman's like, oh, tell me more about the Riddler and Penguin thing. It's not what I'm here to ask about, but you go first. <laughs> he actually says the phrase you first because he mentions uh he personally says something about scarecrow and and the guy's like wait what what are you talking about scarecrow and he's like nah you first <laughs> and then he shoves him over the side of the roof but grabs him by the hair and says careful <laughs> i thought you said batman doesn't kill only on mondays oh shit today's <laughs> tuesday <laughs> <laughs> So the guy spills the beans because he's obviously terrified. And like Batman, oh, just every single panel here is so gorgeously eerie. I cannot get over it. I'll take we it from here. We have this for... giant rounded window. I'll take mm. it from here just for a little bit. This dude Please goes off. To, this dude goes off to tell the story of how the absolute massacre that happened to the Riddler was he was split from chest to crotch. Holy shit. And the penguin was nailed to the ceiling. The fuck? This was yeah. a bloodbath not seen in Gotham. Hold on, pause, pause, pause. Hold on, Batman, what's going through your mind? First, 
Dudes are getting split down the middle all the way down. One dude's pinned to the friggin' ceiling. Another guy's eating another guy right now as we speak. What the fuck's happening out here? Wouldn't you like to know? I do. <laughs> so, this dude, unfortunately, doesn't know what exactly caused this incident. But he does know that ever since a very specific meeting between the Joker and the Penguin. Well, just the whole rogues gallery, really. Apparently they turn up, they meet up semi-regularly to plot Batman's demise, but since they can never make a fucking decision because they can't agree on shit, Batman has stopped caring about that. <laughs> For a hot second, I want everybody to look at the screen and just look at the interpretation of the Joker. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really digging it. It's very, like, Mad Magazine-like, but uh, all right. And also, how just... big the penguin's just... nose is. Like, it doesn't need to be that big. Like, that's that's yeah. edging on a line of, mm, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, like, the Joker's portrayal is just some fucked up stylization. I'll let it go. They exaggerate a lot of his features. Uh, but there's already issues with the penguin being kind of, kind of anti-Semitic. So it was, this was unnecessary, and they probably should not have done that. Mm, this shit looks like Mad Magazine, man. I am, I'm not really. Yeah, what I do even like, though. though is up in the corner, you can see uh, the phantasm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. And that's a nice touch. Also, they also gave Croc, like, little ears that I think is fun, kind of funny. That kind of was, like, a bit iffy, because I was like, I was like, they really did that to him? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hear you somehow. <laughs> I mean, at least uh, the whole bunch, Ivy still looks marvelous. Yeah, it's she true. does. Yeah, she does. I have Marvel S. No, I'm kidding. Pamela, so... doing wonders over there, sweetie. Oh yeah, always. Damn right. So, our story continues as it was not just the Penguin's crew who were just, like, losing it. It was also the Joker's crew. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the Joker's got laughing gas and everything like that, but this was different. This was and the start of a bloodbath. Yeah, once one group went off the rails, everyone else just kind of started feeling it too. Until they were killing each other for no obvious reason. And then they just stopped. Because it right? was over. You gotta ima imagine, right? This is the fucking rogues gallery, right? They'll they'll kill because, you know, you didn't buy them a beer. Like, yeah. It's not like this the Flash's ro rogues gallery where he can just talk to them and be like, yeah, you should go back there. Bye-bye. No, 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 no. Have you taken your meds today? No. Exactly. You should think about behaving. Remember, I always show up. You're like, you know what, Flash? You're right. I reform. You really do. We jump back to our very, very scared person and a Batman. And Batman has this interesting proposal of, so you got out of that. And obviously the Penguin's not going to let you back in his crew because you dipped. Um you need to go join the Joker's crew. Because they're I all... I'll get a new job, buddy. Because uh, I need more information from you. Uh, <laughs> what if he's dead before that? Can I, can I just make mention that the, 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 that the employer himself is homicidal? Can I can I just run that by you? <laughs> well, yeah, just the, this guy has basically the same response. He goes, why would I do that? And Batman goes, because the Batman never kills. I'll never kill you. Ever. I'm far oh, worse than that so multicolored gravel. I will not let you die. And oh. this guy goes, ah, fuck, I left Russia to get away from people like you. <laughs> Listen, I bet I bet Batman told a Robin the same thing, but look what happened to him. <laughs> Rude. Twice. Oh. <laughs> This guy goes home and has the worst fucking day. <sighs> Takes some medication, looks at himself in the bathroom mirror, has a lot of bad vibes. And Tries he to give to himself bed. a pep top, doesn't work. <laughs> Except he, he turns out his little lamp. <sighs> Hears some spooky shit from Batman. Pro possibly in his brain, possibly awake, but he turns on his lamp anyway, and he gets very L-spooked. 
No, I I'd, I'd shit my pants immediately right then. Yeah, uh-huh. that's fucking terrifying. <laughs> I don't uh-huh. need that voice in my head. So, so, wait, so, so did I dream that Batman? Are you in the room? Maybe. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, like. I don't like that answer. Listen, if Batman's this in book... your room and he says the word maybe, you, t- I, <laughs> I don't know what you need to do, but anything's better than sitting there and cowering in fear. <laughs> What I find really interesting, what I find really interesting uh, about the end of this book is that it shows a bunch of the painted art for the next issue. So pretty. So while we continue talking about uh, what we thought of this book, uh, on screen is going to be just some rotating art from the, the next issue. I... well loved this yes i am so glad this how it goes man the darker the batman tale the better the, the book ends up being for some reason and i think my favorite part is the curls and just the sinister ness of the way batman is so shaped Spooks. in this book He's spooky he's a spooky guy and i love it Because it's really easy, right, to fall into the, oh, Batman's a ridiculous concept. How could anyone ever be scared of some guy running around in a fursuit? Well, the answer is they're not actually sure it's a guy. Uh, It's just some terrifying force of justice that turns up and threatens you a little bit, um, knows everything about you, everything you've ever done, and he's just so scary. He looks like that. He may or may not possibly break one of your limbs you never know in the name of justice we'll see yeah it's really really up to his whims at the time and well-written batman is it's hard he's got a lot of contradictory traits and i I know there are people who don't like grimdark batman but this isn't grimdark this is just scary it's different but scary good Hmm. yeah it's not, ooh, woo, I'm such a sad man. It's, I'm investigating some horrible fucking crimes, and I'm mostly associating with criminals because I'm doing my goddamn job, so I'm gonna be as mean and unpleasant as I want, but I actually don't need to be all that mean or unpleasant. I just need to be there. Exactly. Beastie, what'd you think of the book? Honestly, it was, like as menacing like even more like as uh than you know batman usually is and even with a factor of like that that uh the russian dude just like man i love russia and kgb to avoid you and this dude's like oh shit i bet you people like you again like he's just terrified the whole time it's i don't know it's interesting but it just shows like you can portray the batman in a menacing way and still portray the story well too so It's just really, really well done. I know for sure that Table and I will be picking up issue two for sure. And we will continue to put it on a rotation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That as well. And it will consistently be in our rotation uh, when we put out what books we're doing on our social medias. Oh, yeah. With that in mind, that brings us to the end of our show. If you like what we do and would like to be a part of not only picking our book, but also be part of our conversations on t- on Twitter, you can follow us at Crusade Nerd. If you can follow us on Instagram at Nerd Crusade, you can follow our sister show, the Nerd Crusade Podcast, wherever you find them. You can find us right here on twitch.tv slash Nerd Crusade on Mondays for our Monday Night Mixer, where we continue... The Zygarde Chronicles. Zygarde, you bastard. This green snake will go down one way or another. I haven't gotten any rest since. No sleep shall be had. Yeah, my nights are haunted by the escaping of the Zygarde. (laughs) Just like Batman, he always calls to us. (laughs) Zygarde's just like... And you're just like, "Ah, Zygarde. (laughs) Nah. The last time it happened, I swear to you, I, I stood up by the window and had my hand in the window looking outside like, <sighs> one day.
would they? Eventually. How catchy. Found ourselves like... singing the sound of silence for many a week now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With that in mind, what we like to do around these parts when we end our show is send you so that way we can either continue the conversation or continue in a property we've already been mentioning. That second one is exactly where we're sending you tonight. We are sending you to our friend and uh, master of the Yoshi, Hocules, who is doing a Nuzlocke of Pokemon Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Word. That was a lot of words. Hmm. With that in mind, we will chat with you guys later. Have a good night. Have a good night. Peace.